They're the wrong way round. Well, he might be left-handed. Yeah, he ain't. Mum, why you got candles? You expecting a power cut? When you're older, you'll know. <laughs> what are these for? Why? You drink gin. Uh, not when you're having... What are we having? Uh, co agno Farsi. Yeah. Co what? It's French. The stuff land traps, all right? Oh, well, I don't think much of your accent, sis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what is in it, Mags, Casey asks? Why, are you going to tell Leo you did the cooking then? You know, con him into thinking he's found a proper little ass wife. I don't think that's tosses. quite what Leo's yeah. looking for. Mm. That's very rude, you know. You're not the only one at the table. Mum, what is this? Economical beefsteak Of course it's economical. There's no bleeding beefsteak in it. Couldn't you line it up something out of a tin? I'm saving my tins. What for? Against the bit of winter. Bit of winter. Touch of frost, cut the day's snow, that's all. We'll see. It'll get worse before it gets better. Have you seen the length of the fur on next door's cat? They know, you know. Who do? The cats. They've got an instinct. Same as the berries. How can berries have an instinct? The berries have been very thick this winter. Not the only ones. Mother Nature always provides for the birds. Oh, and another thing. Mum, all that is a load of old tosh. We'll see. You want to ask your Frida if she can get you a good length of flannel. Getting a good length of flannel off you, will not I? Because that's the best way to stave off a cold. <sighs> Cover a nice piece of flannel with goose grease, wrap it round your neck and keeps the flu at bay. Keeps everyone at bay. Can't you come and sit down? How can you concentrate out there? Well, I'm winning, aren't I? You're spending a lot of time on those trousers. Well, a favour's a favour. You're sure you're not doing Harvey too many favours? No, Eric, please, for goodness sake. We've been through all this before. I'm not your little sister anymore. No, you're a big girl, but you're also Jewish. And in case you hadn't noticed, half the men in Stamford Hill are also Jewish. Yes, I know. Well, we could always move. Now you're still in check. Frida. Hey. Yes, please, please. Come on. Eric. Oh, if you don't move that one, you'll get us. Huffed? What is half? Huffing's in drafts, Stanley, not in chess. Oh, have I been playing it wrong, then? Uh, so, tell me, Stanley, what did you get for Christmas? Ah, uh, Dick Barton and you... Yeah, a bit stingy, wasn't it? No, I really wanted it, and I know you don't earn so much... And you yeah, but what did so... you really want a Father Christmas that you didn't get? A long trousers. Like these? Yeah, they're terrific. They're for you. Really? <laughs> I'm sorry they're a little late, but I couldn't... Oh, can I try them on now? Yes, of course. Hey, what do you say to Auntie Frida? Thanks a million, Auntie Frida. Well, aren't you going to give her a kiss? No, 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 he doesn't have to. Harvey doesn't have to, but he seems to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does it feel to be your own boss? Oh, God, I've never worked so hard in my own life. <laughs> well, Rita, that was simply delicious. Oh, so it's only coat. Daniel Farsi. How did you know that? Because I've just eaten it. Yeah, I got a tin of peaches after. Evaporated milk. Well, thank you, my dear. I couldn't eat another thing. Brandy. Ah, now that I could manage. Do you know, I'm still ever so worried about that hundred quid I owe you. Well, don't. The salon's a potential gold mine. Oh, it is. Yeah. Do you know, we took over 40 nickel last week. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, I'm only taking a five or a week for myself till I paid you back. Can you cope on that? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, Leo, I'm really... Lucky, haven't you? How many women can say they got a gentleman friend who's really a gentleman? How many gentlemen can say they've got a gentleman friend who's really a gentleman? <laughs> <laughs> See, for a while, I thought Monty would give me what I wanted. Well, I thought that in a rather crude way he did. Well, he had no class. He had a lot of stamina. Yes, well, I knew a sailor like that once. Don't take the piss! <laughs> <laughs> Leo, have you really never been with a woman? Well, of course I have. When I was young, I had lots of girlfriends. In fact, I was once engaged. That was in 1923. That was the last time I was with a woman. What happened? Nothing. At first, I put it down to depression. West Ham had just lost the cup. It was the first final at Wembley, and Bolton beat them 2-0. Well, 1923 is a long time ago. You're absolutely right. It's high time West Ham got to Wembley again. Will you stop wriggling? You know what I'm on about. I think it's high time you chanced your arm with the woman again. Alas, Rita, my arm is not the root of the problem. 
Well, next time West Ham wins, you just let me know. <laughs> just make you a nice cup of tea, Mrs. Brandon. I insist you remove it at once. Hold enough for you, Governor. Oh, good morning, Tom. What can I do for you? I'll tell you what you can do. You can flog me this before my ear holes drop off. As I tell you, standing on that platform, you ain't got no protection against you. Yeah, shouldn't there be a hole in this? <laughs> we do have uh, other colours, in fact, sir. Should you prefer? No, I'd better have the navy. Well, it certainly looks very smart. Pardon? Mr. Brandon. Gold said... chap. <laughs> Three and eleven, wasn't it? That's right, sir. You can't take the money out of there. Don't worry, love. I'll make it up at the garage. Know what I mean? Oh, that's very kind of you. Sorry, I can't stay for tea, love. I've got the bus waiting. Tell her, darling. She's a little cracker, isn't she? <laughs> Leo, I hope you're very proud of yourself. It's always pleasant to make the first sale of a Monday morning, Mother. You know perfectly well what I mean. We've always managed to maintain a certain tone. What am I to say to Lady Mount Gannett when she calls to order her hats for Ascot? Welcome back from the dead. She died what? in 1937. Times are changing, Mother. You can't rely on the carriage trade any longer. This is the age of the common man. Ordinary people will have money to spend. And shopkeepers who consider themselves too high and mighty will simply go out of business. But balaclavas, they've always had an unpleasant connotation for me. That's probably because you can still remember the Crimea. Oh, really? Once and for all, will you remove that absurd thing from my windows? Certainly not. I think we'll sell rather a lot of them in this weather, don't you, Margaret? Well, no offence, Mr Brandon. I won't be seen dead in one myself. Bravo! I mean, they knack your hair do, don't they? <laughs> exactly. Oh, and I must say, your new hairstyle is very charming, my oh, dear. Oh, thanks very much. Janice did it at my mum's saloon. Oh, yes, of course. And it's right what Mr Brandon says about ordinary people having money to spend, because my mum's been really busy. Everyone seems to be having their hair do done. Well, I hope she goes from strength to strength. Yeah, yeah she'll be able to pay you back your hundred quid in no time, Mr Brandon. A hundred pounds? The money Mr Brandon lent mum to buy out Kitty. Excuse me. Oh. Excuse me. Oh, Janice won't be two shakes. Last she's just finishing off Mrs. Kimball. Look, I've been sitting here with wet hair for half an hour, and I only come on a Monday because I've got a function. Yeah, well, Janice won't be two ticks. <laughs> oh, Janice, a phone. Oh, uh, would you excuse me? I've got to uh, a phone. <laughs> Hello, happy girl. Uh, yes, that's right. We did used to uh, trade under the name of Salon Kitty, but we are under new management. Yes. Um, oh, well, would a 3.30 be convenient? Very well. We'll see you then. Bye. Take uh, 18 and 6, please, Mrs Moon. Oh, you look lovely, Mrs Kimball. Oh, do you think my runner like it? He will sweep you off your feet like Rudolph Valentino. Not with his sciatica, he won't. <laughs> oh, dear. You'll have to use your imagination then, eh? <laughs> I'll have to. If I get the flu, I shall oh, sue. Ah, uh, yes, I'll be uh, right with you. <laughs> won't we? <laughs> if I get the flu, I shan't be able to go to my fun... I'd better see to Mrs Starr. No, no, let the moany old cow wait. Have a cup of tea. She is the Lady Mayoress, you know. She's never. Uh, I'll be right with you, your mayorship. <laughs> Lovely. It's nice and warm down here, isn't it? Oh, well, you're always welcome to come and sit by our bar. You and Harvey. Oh, Harvey don't need any invitation to warm his feet the time he spends down here. <laughs> oh, not that I blame him. Oh, what's these? Kuchels. What? Oh. Biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> Eric bakes them. Very nice. That was a lovely pair of trousers you made, our Stanley. Oh, thank you. Really, it was no bother. And Harvey, when he asks a favour, he's... Well, he's, um, very charming. Yeah. I don't think he realises the effect he has on women sometimes. And yet he's not lucky in love. Oh, but that's not his fault. No, well... To be honest, i never really been able to make Rita out. I mean... Of nothing she likes better than having a good time, but give her a due, she'd fight like a wildcat for her kids. Oh, so will Harvey. Yeah. I think he's a very caring man. Yeah. A very deep man. Well, deep? Oh, excuse me. I rang Nan's bell first. She didn't answer it. I rang yours. You opened it. And here I am. No, no. Uh, 
I'm standing your nanny, is it? Stanley, what are you doing here? I rang your bell first. You didn't answer it, so I rang Auntie Frieda's bell. Oh, we've been all through this. Never mind that. You know what I mean. Why aren't you at school? Uh, I'll just get another cup. Well, can I have one of these biscuits? You'd better ask Auntie Frieda first. I've got sent home. What, again? What have you done this time? I ain't done nothing. Pull the other one. Honestly, man, only old Compton sent me home for wearing long trousers. What? Well, I couldn't go home because I ain't got a front door key. I couldn't go around the saloon because Mum would do her nuts, so I came here. I can wear short trousers tomorrow, then. <sighs> Frida, can I have a lend of your phone? Oh, yes, of oh, course. Oh, man, you don't have to tell my mum, do you? Look, i got to let her know where you are, scamp. Yeah, stand. Auntie Frida? Yeah? How old do you have to be to join a foreign legion? Look, we've had nothing but trouble from that place. He'd been better off at the tech. He's in up the grammar. He's the first one in our family to get a chance to break out. Yeah, yeah, breaking out in chill planes. Oh, they're too leery for the grammar. They're Prince of Wales check. Yeah, very nice, too. I'm sure your little Fraulein must be very clever with her hands. No, I'm sorry, Harvey. It's a matter of principle now. Technical school. I am not sending that boy up that school in short trousers. That's final. Technical school, one step from Borstal. You know what you are, don't you? Tell me. A snob. Me? Look. No, 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 no. Let's just change the subject. We'll have a nice glass of brandy. Look, Ree, we've got to sort this one out. Oh, come on, Harvey. Come to not calm down if you and me present a united front. Mm. Unless you want them to come down with pneumonia. Come on, Ree, we're having a bit of a cold snap, that's mm. all. You're yeah, talking of trousers, Harvey. That's what you wear to your office. Yeah, daft, isn't it? Mr Quentin insists on it. It looked like a banker falling in hard times. Oh, I think it's very distinguished. It's a bit low in the, uh, bit Hammersmith Palais. What do you mean? Biggest ballroom in the world. <laughs> Is that the best that you can come up with? <laughs> You're having trouble with your new boyfriend, are you? No, Neil's been wonderful. He's been a great help to me in my business. He's a gent of the old school. You mean you ain't tried it on yet? He's very proper. All right, there's a novelty for you. Oh, you're back early. Oh, it was a lousy film. So I'll be left halfway through. <laughs> Mind you, the bloke sitting next to me was nice. He was horrible. Not when the lights went down, he would. He'd give me a toughie. What film was it, then? Temptation, with Mayor Walbron and jo George Brent, about this woman who poisons her husband and her lover. Oh, no, she did, eh? Yes, she did. Oh, sounds true to life. Well, better be making tracks. <sighs> you will in the snow, Mr Moon. Mm. <laughs> Mrs. Moon? Yes. Maggie was saying how you might be looking for someone to help out in your saloon. Not now, Veronica. Blimey. You seen the snow out there? Oh, is that what it is? Say good night to Captain Oates. Good night, Captain Oates. Hi. <laughs> oh, oh. That's all I need. Rita. Rent's due. Three months. Rita, the water's off. Our parts are frozen at home, too. Oh, that makes me feel a lot better. Two wet customers. Oh, my Bert always bangs it with Emma. That's what my Bert does. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, you better call a plumber. I'd save me money, love. We had a plumber round this morning. He said the mains are frozen solid. Well, how am I supposed to run an hairdressing salon with no water? That's what I was wondering. Oh, Christ. Well, what is it? Guess. Water rates. You ain't got none. Oh, no! That's why I've always been so keen on a boy going to university. Yes, but what about your daughter's education? That's different for a girl. How is it different? Well, she's a little darling, isn't no, no, she? No, 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 no. You can't think like that. She's pretty. Gives her a chance to break out. Well, so does a good education. She's doing well for herself. Look at that bloke she's going out with. No, no. Now. Harvey, listen, everybody should be educated. Uh, poor Stanley, I'll tell you one thing, though. In Austria, in this weather, we would never send children out to school in their little knickers. <laughs> Neither would we. <laughs> no, you know, you know, I mean the, the short trousers. Well, we don't get really cold winters here. Like, granted, this one's miserable. Still oh. out the Alps. My mother says it's going to be a very severe winter. She knows about these things. Did she ask you if you had any spare flannel? No, why? Well, that's her prescription for staving off the flu. You cover yourself in goose grease and wrap yourself in flannel. Oh, no, no, no. It sounds disgusting. It's nice, isn't it? A booba manza. What's that? Yeah, uh, grandmother's story. Well, like an old wives' tale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oi. Should I put some more coal on? No, there isn't any. Anyway, there are plenty of ways two people can keep warm. Blizzards have been widespread. 
cutting off several hamlets in the north of England. Cold enough to cut your hamlets off in Acme. The severe weather shows no signs of abating before the weekend. I told you so. Now, here is a gale warning. Oh, shut up. Shut up yourself. I was going to bring you down a cup of tea in bed. Too cold to sleep. Do you know, in 1894, they were skating on the Thames. Rita's right, you know. Or was it 85? Can't send a boy out in this weather in short trousers. Well, that's all very well, but what about when he starts slipping behind in his schooling? I was talking to Frieda about some private tuition. What, on your manners? Well, needn't cost nothing. Maggie's boyfriend can help me with sums and geography. Frieda can help him with art and foreign languages. I can help him with his English. Oh, that's all right, then. No, it ain't. I mean, it? School ain't just learning. I mean, it's supposed to be a social experience, too. Now you're being deep. Hey? I mean, kids learn from being with each other, not from staying at home. But you know what Rita's like when she gets the bit between her teeth? Who's bit? Make the tea, will you? Uh, what about Mongolia? No. Um, Tibet? Yes. Oh, I know, Japan. Japan. Japan is an island. Now, listen, India is bordered by Persia. Come on, write it down. Persia, Afghanistan, Tibet, Bhutan, China, Nepal, and Burma. Here, Mum, Burma. What? Burma. That's what Uncle Lou wrote on Maggie's birthday card. What? Burma. Be upstairs ready, my angel. Which is stupid since we ain't gotten upstairs, have we, Mum? Look, Sally, would you please keep your voice down? I am trying to work out how much I've taken this week. Or rather, I ain't taken. How comes you know so much about India no, anyway? Because my grandfather was Indian. Really? Maggie never said. Well, that's because she doesn't know. Oh, is it a secret? Oh, hardly. She just never asked. Carried over. Yeah, but you ain't gone well, are you? No, I've faded. Really? No. Here, yeah, Mum, I bet you didn't know that Tom's granddad was an Indian. Oh, the chief said him ball. Sorry I took so long. No, not mm. that sort of Indian. Sorry. It was worth the wait. Oi, that's my coat! Here, yeah, Max, I bet you didn't know that Tom's no, granddad... Stanley. Well, I thought you said it weren't a secret. No, but you'll find out soon enough. Find out what? You'll see. You ready? Carried over. Good night, Rita. Stanley, remember what I told you about quadratic equations? Yes. Yes. What's a quadratic equation when they're at home? It... I'll have to go and get Tom back. No, no, Stanley! Come back! It is still wrong to go to the cinema on a Friday yes. night. Show me where it says in the Bible, thou shalt not go and see Lady in the Lake with Robert Montgomery. Well, I thought you were going with Harvey. Robert Montgomery is an actor, Eric. Oh. Why? If you knew a little more of what went on in the real world. I mean, you've been in this country for ten years now, and what's your life? Synagogue, bakery, home. Synagogue, bakery, home. A home I made for you. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Oh, God, Eric. You're not even 50, and you've become an old man. It wouldn't do you so much harm to come with us. I'm sure God would forgive you enjoying yourself for once. Evening, Eric. Ready, Frida? Of course. Oh, I hope you don't mind me coming to the pictures with you, but we can all sit together and keep warm. There. You see? We have a chaperone. Mazel tov. <laughs> I told you it would warm you up. It's funny, isn't it? I never thought I'd like Indian food the way my dad described it. The only thing is, it is a bit... But some of the spices are quite pungent. Yeah, they are, aren't I they? I trust oh. everything is to your satisfaction. Yes, fine, oh, thank you. lovely, thank you. I've never been to a posh English restaurant, let alone a posh wog one. Sorry. What exactly is this, though? This is sag budgie. Oh, cos I like to know what I'm eating. Ah. Well, that is a poppadom. Poppa what? That is buna lamb, and that is bindi masala. It's uh, okra in butter and spices. Blimey, where did I get all this lot from? Indian cooking makes a little meat go a very long way. Yeah, all the way from India. No, seriously, it's a lesson the English could learn from us, especially now with all the rationing. You're really proud you had an Indian granddad, aren't you? Of course. He was a prince. Really? Only a minor one. How comes you never let on you was Indian? Because you're frightened it'll put me off. The thought had crossed my mind. Even so, your granddad was a prince, so you've still got a bit of it in you, haven't you? I mean, you are a bit cut glass. So what are you bothering with me for? That's what I like about you. Your spontaneity. <laughs> what does that mean? <sighs> well, hang on. Oh, 
come in, come in, come in. Sorry to trouble you, Mrs. Moon. No, it's all right, it's all right. Who is it? Oh, it's you, Mr. Carlton. I'll never recognise you under all that. You look like Scott of the Arctic. Yes, I feel like Scott of the Arctic, Mrs. Moon. Now, now you sit down by the fire. Oh, thank you. Would you like a nice glass of brandy? Oh, well, yes, please. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, I'm sorry. It's on the floor. Oh. I'm only halfway through it. <sighs> ah, Rimsky Korsakoff. No, Remy Marte. Oh, the wit still shines through, eh? <laughs> oh, mm. isn't it awful, eh? I've never known a winter like it. No. I notice you ain't wearing short trousers. Now, look, before you go on, the school shut down today. Eh? Hey? We ran out of coal. Oh, I am sorry. I'd love to help you out. I'm on electric. So until the next fuel delivery, we're, we're setting the children some work to do at home. And as Stanley hasn't been present, um, would you mind? I've brought some maths, history, and a, a Latin translation. Oh. oh. There. Oh, I'm sure you'll be tickled pink. Oh. Well, I'd better down this. There's a long way to go. Oh. 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 Well, if Stanley could do that while the school's closed, yes. I'd better be <coughs> heading back to Goffsoak. That's a long walk. Oh, I've got my little sunbeam outside. Oh, you shouldn't have left your wife in a car. <laughs> oh, that's the spirit. Well, bye, Mrs. Moon. Mind your head! This is Lester. And here's Lester's mainline station. But where are the trains? I thought we came here to get away from all this. Heading back towards London. My feet are like two blocks of ice. Old oh, King George won't need his bed socks, will he? Skiving off the South Africa. He ain't skiving. Should you be? The worst bit of weather for 50 years. We hope it'll be 50. Oh, Mrs. Moon, it's awful. Yeah, it's awful. Oh, Mrs. Moon, it's awful. Oh, Mrs. Moon, it's awful. Oh, Mrs. Moon, it's awful. The king has to go where the government tells him he ain't going because he wants to. Well, they weren't exactly dragging him up the gangplank, were they? Oh, you. I'm the manager. Good evening. I come to see the film, not you. I regret to have to inform you that there's been a general power cut throughout this part of Stoke Newington. Patrons are respectfully requested to leave the premises through the exit doors, uh, which would be illuminated except for the power cut. <laughs> I want to see Robert Montgomery. Oh, right. yeah. He likes the sound of his own voice. Oh. Oh. Your uh, tickets will be valid for a future presentation. Uh, the, ush the usherettes will uh, indicate the location of the exit door. We can't go out in there. Oh, I'm coming! even turn over. Eh? It's the battery. I can't get a spark full of the money. Sounds like you need a bit of a charge. Look, can I use your telephone? Well, I'd love to help you if we only have one, but I'm afraid we're only of humble working stock. Oh, dash it! Oh, you're really angry, aren't you? Well, I don't know what to do. I mean, is there a hotel hereabouts? Well, there's the Edmonton branch of the Dorchester, but... Uh... Oh, look, you can stay here if you like. But... Oh, that's, that's terribly kind. Yeah. You can kip on the sofa. At least half if you can. The other half will have to hang over the edge. I told you not to go! You foresaw we would be caught in a blizzard? You didn't even see your film, did you? Must be God's punishment. Don't mock! I don't mock, I ache, and please don't shout. I'm not shout! Are you I'm sure? Shout. A good, uh, uh, Sabbath. We were just popping down the shops, wondering if there was anything we could get you. Oh, yes, some medicine for my sister. What's up? No, Harvey, I'm all right. She's not all right. She has influenza from last night. Oh, oh it's just a little chill. You called a doctor? No, there's no need. Oh, poor soul. Why are you? Nana Mir, all right. Sorry, Eric. I feel as if it's my fault. It is your fault. Eric! 
<coughs> he's anxious about missing school. You, you run along to the synagogue, mate. Mum and me will look after Freddie, won't we, Mum? Oh, goes without saying. There you are, Eric. Go to school. Pray for sunshine. Yes, you go along. Go on, don't worry. She'll be all right. Now then, what you need is some medicine for that cough, some friar's balsam to loosen your chest, and some aspirin. Shame we can't get hold of a nice dollop of goose grease. So you're laying me off? Well, you know I don't want to. Never thought I'd have to sign on the doll. Well, at least you're entitled. I'm self-employed. I've got sweet Fanny Adams. You could thaw this weekend. Oh, I doubt it. There was this professor on the wireless the other day going on about how he was due for another ice age. You got one. No. About 40,000 years ago when giant hairy mammoths roamed the southern part of England. Oh, well. Look on the bright side. If they roam down Bruce Grove, we could always do them a dry cut. <laughs> You're a good kid, Shannis. I'll see you when the sun comes out. Eh? OK. It's a bit early for that, isn't it? Where the hell have you been? To an Indian restaurant. Yeah, I can smell that. That was last night. Well, they got a very long menu. Oh, it's still off, is it? Is that why Janice is leaving early? Where were you all night? Well, I can't get home from Regent Street in that weather, could I? Oh. Tom had to abandon his car. He was sliding all over the place down Savile Road. Look, you are not the first person whatever went down the West End, you know. You could have got a tube to Manor House, then you could have got a tram. Trams weren't running, tubes weren't running. The only thing that was running was me and Tom. Yeah, where to? Luckily. Tom lives in Piccadilly. Oh, what's he got? A wigworm in St James's Park? You know very well what I mean. His living room's as big as our prefab, and the bath's big enough for two people. Margaret, are you trying to tell me something? Look, Mum, I'm sorry if you was worried, but you've got to stop treating me like a kid. I'm 19 years old now. I'm a woman. And I don't like you poking your nose into my private affairs. Well... This is a change from the innocent little virgin that used to go out with Lou Lewis. Yeah, well, that's because Lou was a bit of a kid, whereas Tom's a man. I see. Mum, have you ever heard of the Kama Sutra? Oh, you know I've never had Indian food. And it's a miracle the baby ain't come down with something. Yeah. I mean, it's freezing. I don't think the wife can cope much longer. And considering it's council property. Council property? Yeah, what of it? Well, then you're entitled to emergency fuel coupons. Get away. I'll just fill in the form. Um, I left my specs at home. Look, a lot of people have trouble with forms. Why don't you take it home, fill it in your own time, we'll get you some fuel cheese. You're a gent, Councillor Moon. That's socialism for you. Wheel in the next, comrade Rosie. Right. Huh. Fancy seeing you here. Take a seat. Well, this is where it all goes on. Uh, nothing wrong at home, is it? Nothing that a bit of decent weather wouldn't put right. Yeah, I heard you'd have a bit of a hard time with your business. I'm going under, Harvey. I come to you for help. Come to me for help? Yeah, believe me, you are my last resort. I wouldn't give you the satisfaction otherwise. Oh, it's nothing to do with satisfaction. What can I do? Well, you're a counsellor, aren't you? No, I'm an acne counsellor. You live in Tottenham. You can still pull strings if you want to. I can't change the weather, Rita, even on my own patch. Look, all I want you to do is do something about this. Rent demand. Well, I ain't got no spare cash, mate. Perhaps you should, uh, well, well, your gentleman, then. Oh, no, Leo's already in for over an hundred. I can't go to him for more. Look, here's the number. Now, don't sweat. All I want you to do is phone up my landlord, get him off your back until the weather changes. Go on, you phone him now. Won't wash, Ray. Don't talk to me about washing. Bloody your All right, I'll give it a go. Three months' rent. When am I going to get that? Three months. Hello, uh, could I speak to Mr. Martin, please? Um, ah, good evening, Mr. Martin. I'm uh, phoning on behalf of Mrs. Moon of the... Um, excuse me. What's he called? The Happy Curl. I can't say that. It's called the Happy Curl. The Happy Curl. I think it's for a snow till April. Ladies' hairdressers. Um, it's about her rent. Exactly. Well, if you could see your way clear to... Why do you want to know? Councillor Moon. Yeah, well, actually, I am her husband. But that don't alter the justice to her case. Sorry, Reet. Thanks, comrades. 
Rita, my dear. Oh, Leo, I didn't have no one else to turn to. Is your mother in? No, she's gone to her spiritualist meeting. Something terribly urgent she wanted to tell father. I'm in bed stuck, Leo. My dear. We've got no water. I can't wash. I can't perm. And now this. Uh, calm down, calm down. Hold on. Now. Have you heard from the water board? Oh, yeah. They sent us a bill. Uh, like you said, things were difficult, but I didn't realise how difficult. Oh, you've been wonderful, Leo. I promised myself I'd never come to you again, but I... <sighs> All right. I really shouldn't be doing this. And don't tell Maggie. Maggie? A charming girl, but a mouth the size of Rotherhithe Tunnel. Like it does, it's stupid. She's got a job to go to. Don't call me stupid. She might have been laid off. No, she ain't seen Tom for days. What are you going on about? I'll tell you when you're grown up. I've been laid off from the Johnny factory because the rubber goes brittle when there's no eating. What are you doing? Algebra. No, Stanley. That's what my dad had to have rubbing his back when he's got his rheumatics. No, Veronica. That's algae pan. Oh. Oh. Hello, Veronica. What are you doing here? She's been laid off. This comes second post. It's from the bank. Now, what do they want? The one you open up and see. Haven't you got no arms to go to? How's the saloon going, Mrs Moon? Oh, it's lovely, Veronica. That's why I'm home at two o'clock. <laughs> oh, no. We've still got water at home. We're the only ones left in the street with it. Oh, well, bully for you. What's up, Mum? His bloody cheque's bounced. Now, don't bring them both up. One of them's for Frieda. I'll pop it in then. No, leave it there. Bring the other up. Anything else, Mum, Capitan? Yeah, don't spill any. That's the second time I've had a queue for water today. But we had mains water this morning. That was this morning. Oh, another thing. Don't pull the chain in the lobby unless you really have to. <laughs> One thing. At least I'm working up a bit of a sweat. Shinbad the failure, they're calling him. Who? Oh. Shinwell, your Minister of Power, of course. This country used to have coal coming out of its ears. We got the coal, it's just the railways are frozen up. Well, then we should have more coal, shouldn't we? Why? Cos the trains ain't using any, are they? <laughs> Do you mind popping over to the chemist, Margaret, and calling for my prescription? But what if someone comes in to buy an act? Well, I think we can manage, dear. Why don't you collect your own prescription, Mother? The exercise will do you good. A break my neck on the ice? Do you mind, Margaret? Uh, get me a racing edition, would you, Margaret? Oh, all right. Peter! Oh, Leo, what am I going to do now? That landlord's really angry. I was depending on that money. If you I... have come to plead with my son, his mind is made up. What are you doing passing me a dud check? It's not a dud, as you call it. I stopped it. You? It is money. No, Mrs Moon, it was the shop's money. And the shop is mine. Rita, I'm afraid I wrote the cheque on a company account. You blood-sucking old hag! You call the police! Oh, you give yourself airs and graces like a pin Queen Mary, and what are you? You're a jumped-up shop girl well overdue for the day for the undertaker. <sighs> Do you know what you've done to this man? Rita! Hey, have you ever, ever thought why he's never got married? Rita, hey. there are some things that are better left unsaid, and what you're about to say is one of them. My mother is an elderly woman. Yes, I am elderly. Perhaps I have brought him up to be too kind and considerate, so vulnerable to gold diggers. Me? A gold digger? Then listen, you, every penny I got is wrapped up in that saloon and the old bleeding lot is going down the drain. It's about the only thing that is in this sodding weather. A few things are more pathetic than self-pity. Yeah, I do feel sorry for myself, yeah. But I'll tell you what, not half as sorry as I feel for him having to live with you. God, no wonder your old man cashed in his chips in 1914. Between you and the Kaiser, he would not have a minute's peace. Yeah, well, all that seems in order. What do I do now? Uh, you take it down to fuel depot. Right. Lee Bridge Road, give you some coal, 28 pound sex. I don't need coal. Hey? I ain't got a bleeding fireplace, have I? Oh. It ain't coal that I need. It's extra electric. Ah, oh, well, that's gonna be a bit tricky, you oh, know. Fat lot of use you are. Here, hold on. If you knew the red tape, wanker. I 
I don't know why we're not allowed to go over the park and chop down a tree. You're stupid. I've heard worse ideas. Oh, and how are we going to get a tree back in this weather? With a team of huskies and a sled, Vicky. Oh. Blimey, what are you bought? Oh, God, so we've got coal. Oh, lovely. I'll get a nice fire going. Oh, this is a cup of tea first. All right, lad, all right, all right. Oh, where'd you get it, Dad? Oh, it's my reward for working on a sandwich. Stanley, don't help Nan with Dad's tea. Nan knows how to boil a kettle. Stanley, I want to talk to Dad, all right? Oh, Megs, I know what you're talking about. I'm not a little kid anymore. I know Mum's all low, what with the shop being shut up, and Uncle Leo's check coming back from the bank with refer to your drawers on it. What check? She went back to bed after breakfast today and refused to get up. I knew she was down when she came to see me. Here, give us a hand with this coal. That's a good lad, I think she did in front of them nervous breakdowns. Well, you should have made her come round there instead of leaving her on her own. Oh, no, don't worry. She's as tough as old boots. I'll tell you what, Mags. If she gets any worse, Stan can come round and stay with me. Good oh. evening. Good evening, Mrs. Moon. Oh. Margaret. Everything all right? Oh, yes. We have a lovely fire. Frida is warm. All thanks to you. Pleasure. I had a couple of bags left over. And Frida and I would like you all to come down and share our supper. Really? Well, yes. that's very kind. <laughs> what, Jewish food? Yeah, of course. Oh, I never had foreign food before. Oh, you'll love it if it's anything like curry. Nice. God, I wish those kids would remember to take their bleeding key with them. All right, I'm coming! the right place. Oh. Are you Mrs. Moon? Yeah, who are you? I'm Henry's wife. Henry who, the eighth? Henry Compton, as well you know. Oh, you're Compton's little son, babe, are you? Yeah, you must look up to him. Do you want a brandy? Certainly not. Oh, it's with yourself. It's one way to keep warm. Look, if you come to pick up Stan's own work, I don't think he's done it yet. Are you sure you don't want to serve? I think my Henry should sink to this. Huh? Mrs. Moon, are you denying that my husband stayed with you on the night of Friday, the 31st of January? Yeah, what is this? A pleading inquisition? Mrs. Moon, I have reason to believe... Oh, you're sure for a cop, aren't you? Mrs. Moon, I'm asking the questions! Yeah, well, all right, yeah, he did, as it happens. His car wouldn't start, he kept on the sofa. And let's face it, love, no man's gonna break his neck hurrying home to you. What did you work in the Gestapo? I do not go about stealing husbands. That makes two of us. This isn't even a proper house. No, you're right, it's a prefab. It's cold as a witch's tea. Oh, my God, the woman's a slattern. Oh, look, if you're going to be rude, I'm going back to bed. And who have you got in there with you today, I wonder? Look, love, I'm far too depressed to argue the toss with you. If you really think I'm silly enough to want to get my leg over your old man, you must be even stupider than he is. Would you close that door on the way out? Wonderful. Yeah. So you've all had enough? Sounds. Oh, yeah. I still can't imagine how you managed to get all this food. But Frida has an admirer in the fish business. Oh. I like that purple soup best. That's called Bosch. No, no. No, that's what we call the Jerry's in the last war. Bosch. That was the Bosch. Oh, Bosch. Oh, sounds the same to me. Oh. Call it beetroot soup. What? Would anybody like some tea? What'd you call that? Tea. Oh, I'll make it. Sorry. No, 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 it's all ready oh. made. It's nice having a crowd, isn't it? Like mm. in the blitz when we used to go down the shelter with our sandwiches and flasks and have a good old sing song. Well, mm. we never used the shelter. We have a deep cellar here. We used to have musical evenings in Vienna, though. Oh, like sing songs in the pub? No, no, we had a family orchestra. Really? Well, you was making tea, Mr. Gottlieb. This is the continental way. Mm. Oh, tea's a British drink. No milk. Tea comes from India, Nan. Well, India's British, isn't it? Not for much longer. Ah, you don't think they'll give it away to that funny little man in a tea towel, do you? What's his name? Bandy? Gandy. Oh, Tom's granddad met him once. Mm. What I want to know is how he keeps it up. Aye? That bit of cloth he wears... Um, no, it's in... called a loin cloth. Oh, Frida knows, because she's a tailor. Did you all used to play in this family orchestra, then? Yes. Frida played piano. I had a violin, but I wasn't very good. And my father, well, he played the cello. Frida, would you like to play us something now? Oh, yes. If you put it up to it. Yes, of course. Do you know I'm going to get lit up when the lights go on in London? No, no, I don't think uh, so. Frida knows a lot of jazz. Ah, 
sounds like Al Johnson. Oh, that, that makes me think of mum. Yeah, I know. I'll come round tomorrow, see what I can do, promise. Stanley, you know I can't see properly. Well, you can't play snap slow. You get it. Oh, hello. Hello, Veronica. Moved in, have you? It's funny. Mrs. Moon said that as well. Studying hard, son. Yeah, of course. Cool. Don't fall behind. Ain't we playing cards no more, then? How would you like a poke in the other eye? Mum, any better? She's just gone over to doctors with her nerves. I'm helping out, keeping an eye on little Stanley while she's gone. Dad was talking to me, Veronica. Actually, it's always been my ambition to become an hairdresser, Mr Moon. Huh? And I'll never make it unless I help Mrs Moon get better, will I? No, she will never get any better as long as you're hanging around getting on her nerves. Oh, come on, Stanley. Veronica means well. Yeah, so did Ethelred the Unready. Who? He was a Saxon king. We had a cat called Ethelred. No, you never. It was a rabbit and it was called Harold. He was a king, though, King Harold. He had trouble with his eye. Uh, Veronica. Be a bit of a wage drop for you, wouldn't it? I mean, you'll only be an apprentice. Oh, but I hate the rubber factory, Mr Moon. And I don't need much money to live on. I hardly ever go out. I wonder why. Stanley. I've been saving over a quid a week since I've been there. Really? What are you saving for? For when I get married. You know I've done leave a lot of money when you die. Stanley, is this a phase you're going through? What? So you must have a tiny bit put by. £143, six shillings and fourpence. You ain't. I have. It's in the post office. You're not telling me any whoppers, are you? No, look. You look. How badly do you want to be an hairdresser? I'd give anything, Mr Moon. Cos I've got a suggestion. Why don't you lend Mrs Moon enough to keep her head above water till the four? Then I reckon she'll have to give you a job. Oh, hello, Veronica. Oh, you're here and all, are you? Been laid off, have you? I'm the only one down the office. I ain't got flu, so I'll make my own hours. Hey, what did the doctor say? Oh, he's a great help. I'm severely depressed. But I should perk up when the weather changes. It's still snowing. I'm going to bed. Hold on, Rick. Veronica may have the medicine you need. Oh. I've got £143, six shillings and fourpence. And I'll lend it to you if you give me a job. You! She's got the money, Rick. Be -be -de -be -de. The cavalry's here. <laughs> well, I never thought General Custer would be a fat girl with a funny eye. <laughs> That's not a very nice thing to say. <gasps> oh, never mind, Veronica. <laughs> it's only me. <laughs> ah, sorry, I'm late. Ooh. Big picture starts, what, five minutes? So you're in love with the cinema all of a sudden? I got the evening all planned out. Stan, will you get that? You're nearest. I'm dusting. You ain't dusted the thing in two years. One minute won't make any difference. Stan. Hey, Stanley. Hi, sir. Oh, it's Catherine Overcompton. I thought his first name was Henry. Stan. I just dropped by to see how Stanley's getting on with his homework. Oh, is that all? After I've gone to all this effort? Yeah, all done. You're excellent. Any problems? None at all. Not even with quadratic equations? Piece of cake. Mr Perry said you found them difficult. Oh, I did with Mr Perry. But once Maggie's boyfriend explained it to me properly... Oh, I see. He's a teacher. No, he's an Indian. It, look, I don't want to hurry you, but you don't want your little sunbeam to cool down and seize up on you again, do you? I was hoping to have a word with you on a private matter. Uh, Stan? Yeah? When did you last tidy your room? Oh, that's a new one. I just wanted to thank you for the discretion you exercised when confronted with my Clara. Who? Mrs Compton. She can be a trifle excitable. Excitable? She's off her trolley. But how you managed to convince her you are unattractive and, well, common, I, I simply don't know. I did it for you. 
Henry. Henry. She's quite wrong, of course. The truth of the matter is, I find Yeah, you well, it ain't mutual, so don't get excited. Sorry. There is one thing you can do for me, though. I just want to be sure that when school starts again, I can dress my stand any way I want. There are rules, Mrs. Moon. There's Mrs. Compton, Mr. Compton. Do you think she followed me? <laughs> Mr. Compton was just going. <laughs> Well, Rita, you didn't waste much time. Oh, no, no. He thought that you were his wife. No, I mean, uh, he didn't think that you were his wife. He thought it was his wife at the door. He's, he's a bit silly. <laughs> he, he'd come for Stan's homework. It's his headmaster. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you must be joking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, look, I just want to say that I've got a big mouth. Right? And I was really worried about the saloon. But I never meant to come round the shop and upset your mum, and I never meant to tell her that you were a Nance, right? You betrayed me, Rita. I put my trust in you and you betrayed me. Oh, no. On the way here this evening, I made a pact with myself. But unless I received a full apology, then that was it. She got my goat. Well, I suppose that was a full apology. Was. Well, look, my dear, I realise that I was not the only one who was let down, but, well, I'd had a bad run of cards and my current account was overdrawn. Oh, well, I've got what the uh, bank manager calls a alternative source of finance. Well? Mm. I mean, giving a job to the silliest girl in Edmondson. Ah. <laughs> I thought you'd be pleased. Well, yes, of course I am. Well, you might as well add this to it. Oh, blimey. Never rain for it pours. What did you do here? A rubber bank? No, a sort of fine old antique clock that's been in the family for years. Oh, Leo, you shouldn't have. It's quite all right. It was mother's. Put on the light, Mag. It's funny, it does work. Well, you went oh. out in this weather. You gave me a turn. I thought you were at work. Or a lovely film. No, tonight is my busiest night, but there was a power cut, so I couldn't work. Oh, oh. you could have come with us if you'd known. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, you got a knock. Oh, Here. oh thank you. Hold thank on, Thank you. Yeah. You lead the way, Mags. Grab me coat. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, and all this. 